Hello, hello there. 77 days after their parents came out of the cocoon, the new generation have also arrived. Look at this nice airy silk moss. It's called in in India and in Thailand, where it's where it's cultivated a lot, not only for uh, silk. That's a byproduct mostly, but they are cultivated mostly uh, for edible pupils. Um, yes, like this thing here you see here. This is uh, a snack preparation of pupils with salt, spicy things of the airy silk moss. Some your Cynthia that you see here. 77 days is. Um, a pretty fast life cycle. Um, let's say in Switzerland, in the cold time, in winter, fed with only Brunus, Lauro, Terosus and Ligustrum. Originally in the countries where Romeo Tintio is cultivated, the life cycle is about 35 to 40 days. That's much, much uh, faster, um, almost half of the life cycle here in Europe depends of course mostly on temperature so if you go near 30 uh, degrees Celsius so you have a very very fast uh, life cycle of Sonia Tintio but it's also nice for Europe to see that we have this uh, insect that can be reared also in winter time it seems you just find out doors and that we can generate about five four to five uh, generations a year with this uh, insect and so that's mostly the reason why in the countries where Somiotuntia happens uh, to origin from mostly north, uh, east and northwest India uh, they are grown and cultivated since hundreds or thousands of years uh, for their edible pupas and the byproduct mostly then is silk, it's not the main uh, thing. So we can say Somia Tuntia is probably the oldest uh, cultivated edible insect in the world, an insect that is cultivated uh, to be eaten. Other than grasshoppers or crickets, mostly they were caught wild in the fields, they were not uh, especially uh, cultivated to eat. But this uh, Somia Tuntia is probably the oldest uh, insect in the world that was cultivated uh, to be eaten. And one of the problems is that we don't know that in Europe, so uh, they are not found yet on the list of edible insects in, for example, Belgium uh, or other countries in Holland. Why? Because uh, nobody does it here in Europe, uh, cultivates on your tintio. But for the pet industry, we produce a lot of mealworms, uh, grasshoppers, crickets, whatever. And all of these uh, pet food insects, they appear on this, uh, on this list of edible insects. Um, my opinion is very clear. Uh, that's the most important of all these edible insects that we have on this planet Earth. Uh, they miss so far. That's this one. So, meal, tintio. Uh, it's also in the amount of tons they are produced, of course, the most important edible insect worldwide. And so that's a bit uh, a critical situation that we try now only to put uh, the insect on the, on the foot plate of humans that we originally uh, cultivated for our pets. And I think that should be changed and that will be changed, of course, because... Um, you cannot um, miss out the, the um, edible insects that have been produced and eaten for the longest time uh, already. Although in contact with edible insects, we have to say that the pupas of Somio Cynthia they are probably the safest uh, edible insect. Why? Because they have no gut content anymore. Even the adults, they don't uh, eat or drink anything anymore. The only thing is, uh, compared with other insects that we eat, for example, the hemimetabol um, crickets or grasshoppers, they always contain part of the f food they have eaten themselves. So if they eat something poisonous, like this Prunus lauro terosus, 
it's uh, some uh, part of this poisonous plant inside of this edible insect. So that's one of the problems we have now to discuss also in the process of um, bringing edible insects on our European tables. And that's the problem we don't have with Somiocintia because the pupas, they don't contain uh, any gut anymore. Yeah. So what we do, um, 20th of December, the parents of these beautiful Somiocintias came out of their cocoons. Today now, or the last two to three days, a lot of them appeared. Look here, you see, um, they are mostly when they come out, they just pump the hemi hemolymph into the wing so that they can be open. And then the females wait for a male to arrive. And the males, they fly around a little bit in the cage, but they, they don't fly a lot. They are they are just uh, looking for the women and they have no time for that because five to eight days, not more, they have for their little stage as adults. And you see here that the, uh, a male here on top and a female on the bottom, they are connected with the abdomen. So that's the mating process of Somio uh, Cynthia. This wing is a little damaged because it probably was flying or flattering here uh, around in the in the cage, and what you see on the on the bottom here, these um, brownish uh, dots, that's the so-called meconium. It's a, a fluid produced inside the pupa and inside the adult beetle. It's all the material that they don't need as adults anymore from their caterpillar stage. So while uh, rebuilding um, the adult uh, silk moss with the material from the caterpillar, all this protein and so on, there's some leftovers and this is the meconium. These drops they give uh, from them just before they are ready for mating. So they come out of the cocoon, they spread their wings, afterwards they give out this meconium and then they are ready for mating. And this goes very fast, mostly the first night they are here in this world, they mate with a man, and the second night they start laying their eggs until they are finished and then they mostly die. Males can mate two to three times or even more if they are healthy and if the atmosphere in the cage is good, especially if it's, uh, the humidity is high enough, and then they die also. For me also it's a little bit uh, difficult to, to check in an adult, whether it's a male or a female, that's not very easy. Most of you can check it by the size. So you see that the, that the female seems much bigger than a male, but not often it's that clear. So let's see here, just under this lens. So that's, here you see that's a male and the female. So let's just run it around out of this side, yeah. Yeah, here. This is the female, and that's the male. Mostly the females are a little bit bigger. And uh, see, this, they look a little bit more pumped up in the abdomen. That's because they have a lot of eggs inside. Uh, up to 200 um, they can lay. What I do now is I prepare a little box for each pair so that they, I can check how many eggs they are laid by each female. I put... Uh, one of the sponges filled with water and a little piece of toilet paper. You can also add some uh, leaves where the females can lay the, the eggs on and then you have to carefully take them away here. Uh, this is uh, hangs to the, uh, almost, yes, uh, this one we take like this. Of course you have to pay attention that to keep them together like this and then you can place them into this case. They are still connected and they're waiting now here until mating process is over. That can last some hours, mostly next night. Um, they separate and then uh, the females start laying their eggs. Here some more. They're probably just waiting. This seems to be a female here. This with this prominent big uh, abdomen here. I just put them back into the cage then. And look here, you can see all this, I try to 
so it was this camera here that as you see it's a little bit press you see all of these nice beautiful Samio Cynthia Rizzini these are connected here they are already mating this is the other ah it is also here they are mating although I could take them out too and put them in a solo box where I can draw and then here there are a lot of more cocoons uh, that are filled with pupas that will emerge very soon. So this um, nice silk moss is one of the favorites I think for all the urban farmers out there. If you want to use plants in your urban surrounding that grow even in the winter time, that's the number one insect that you not only can enjoy looking at and making silk and weave your own shirts with it but you if you want you can also um, eat the pupas and it's um, interesting to know that on a one square meter of indoor space if you make it four to five generations in four of these cages you can produce practically all of the animal proteins that you would need as a, a human being during the year. That's you see how energy efficient uh, insects are compared with other meat producing uh, animals. I think this is really the future. If you don't want to be vegetarian like I am or vegan, that's even much better for our um, environment. But don't forget that pupas of this Somnocintia and a lot of insects they contain very, very uh, valuable uh, uh, vitamins and other um, ingredients that are, would be also useful for vegetarians and vegans because it's a little bit difficult to live completely without insects. And as you probably know, also a vegetarian or a vegan that only eat uh, um, uh, plant stuff, they eat uh, more than half a kilo of insects every year in small parts inside of the vegetables and uh, other stuff and probably that's also a source of, of health and good nourishment. Or oh, let's discuss about that. Thanks for watching.